Tide and welcome to Tide TV This Week. I'm Roger Hoover, joined by Kira Goldstein. And Kira, we're talking after Alabama lost to Texas A&M, but there's still a lot to accomplish for this football team. Yeah, Roger, I don't think many people saw this upset coming. It was a tough game from the jump. Alabama struggled in the red zone, and unfortunately, the Tide couldn't get the win in College Station. There were some bright spots in the loss. Bryce Young connected with Roydale Williams for a 20-yard touchdown on Alabama's opening drive put the Crimson Tide up 7-3. But AM answered with two touchdowns to regain the lead. In the third quarter, the first points on the scoreboard actually came from the Crimson Tide special teams. Ja'Cory Brooks blocked the AM punt, and King Makuda recovered it in the end zone for the touchdown. Bryce Young connected with Jamison Williams for a couple of touchdowns as well. A 29-yard strike to cut the Aggies' lead to just seven at 31-24 in the third. Then in the fourth, Alabama caught Texas A&M sleeping as Jamison Williams was left wide open in the end zone. The seven-yard touchdown strike gave Alabama the 38-31 lead, but the Aggies returned a kickoff for touchdown and hit a 28-yard field goal as time expired to upset the number one ranked Crimson Tide 41-38. Despite the loss, Alabama actually outgained Texas A&M 522 yards to 379. Bryce Young finished with 369 passing yards compared to just 285 for the Aggies. Tide also held Texas A&M to under 100 yards rushing at just 94 yards. Brian Robinson Jr. had 147 yards himself while the Tide totaled 153 on the ground. Jameson Williams led the Tide with a game-high 10 receptions for 146 yards and two touchdowns. John Mechie finished with seven catches for 88 yards. DeMarco Hellams had an interception and Brian Branch had a game-high nine tackles and two tackles for a loss. For the first time in 25 tries, former assistant coach finally won against Coach Saban. Jimbo Fisher had lost the most against former Crimson or former assistants going into the matchup as he was 0-4 against Coach Saban. Roger, Texas A&M sure did not play like an unranked team. The Aggies were ranked fifth after week one, and then they were unranked when they faced the Tide, and this loss really changed some things. It ended Alabama's win streak against unranked teams at 100, and it snapped Alabama's eight-game win streak over Texas A&M. The loss also snapped the Crimson Tide's 19-game win streak. It was the longest in the nation. Alabama did set a new record on Saturday, though. The Crimson Tide has scored 30 or more points in 32 consecutive games. That is the longest streak in major college football history. So so there is that. Here's what Coach Saban had to say after the game. A lot of lessons to be learned right there tonight. Um, try to give Texas A&M a lot of credit for how they played. They had a good plan. The players did a good job of executing it. Uh, we certainly moved the ball well enough on offense, uh, yardage-wise, uh, but they stopped us in the red zone. Uh, we turned the ball over on the two-yard line with an opportunity to score. We actually went ahead in the game at the end of the game, couldn't get the stops on defense we needed to, and had the ball uh, with three minutes to go in the game. Could have gone two minutes, went down the field, and had a chance to kick a field goal, win it ourselves. And then, you know, we didn't stop them. So um, they made the plays that they needed to make to win the game. Uh, we didn't make the plays we needed to make to win the game. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll learn a lot from this. And... You know, we still can accomplish everything we want to accomplish um, in terms of, um, but we got to do things better than we did tonight. We got to play better. We got to be more consistent. We got to finish drives. We got to get more turnovers on defense. We got to get more stops on defense. There's a lot of things we need to fix. Coach Saban and the coaching staff selected five players as their players of the week. Two on offense, one on defense, and two on special teams. Brian Robinson Jr. rushed for over 100 yards for the second week in a row and finished with 147 yards on 24 carries. He also added four catches for 60 yards for a total of 207 all-purpose yards. Jameson Williams had a game-high 10 receptions for 146 yards and two touchdowns. Of Williams' 10 catches, seven were for a first down, in addition to his two touchdowns. Williams also had a two-point conversion. DJ Dale played a big role in limiting Texas A&M to just 94 rushing yards, and he finished with one solo tackle. And on special teams, Ja'Cory Brooks blocked a punt early in the third quarter that was recovered in the end zone for an Alabama touchdown. And Will Reichard scored 12 points in the game. Reichard connected on all three of his field goals and all three extra points. The kickoff time for the Crimson Tide's homecoming matchup next Saturday against Tennessee was announced on Monday. The Tide and the Volunteers will kick off at 6 p.m. The game will be broadcast on ESPN. 
As of now, the pep rally is scheduled for Friday night at 6.30 with the Tide tip-off event scheduled for 7.30 at Foster Auditorium. The homecoming parade is scheduled for 1 o'clock on Saturday. Another big week for the Tide in the NFL and a big week for a couple of Alabama running backs. Let's take a look at this week's Crimson Tide in the NFL Players of the Week. Derrick Henry rushed for 130 yards on 29 carries as he crossed the goal line three times in the Tennessee Titans' 37-19 win over the Jacksonville Jaguars. King Henry leads the NFL in rushing with 640 yards, 117 yards more than anyone else. Roger, that is crazy. Henry also leads the NFL with seven rushing touchdowns. Najee Harris is starting to make his mark in Pittsburgh. Harris had his first 100-yard rushing game as he finished with 122 yards on 23 carries with a touchdown. Najee also added two receptions for 20 yards in the Steelers' win over the Denver Broncos. And wow, what about Trayvon Diggs? All he does is intercept passes, Roger. It's crazy. Diggs intercepted a pass in his fifth straight game this season on Sunday against the New York Giants. He also added two pass deflections and five tackles. Trayvon leads the NFL with six interceptions. That's three more than anyone else. And he said he owes it all to Coach Saban. Uh, I was hurt at first, honestly. Uh, I called my brother. Uh, I was crying. You know, he, he, he not just someone to be like, oh, it's okay, you know, suck it. He'd be like, nah, come on, let's go. Now we got to go to work. He's one of those type, and that's exactly what I did. You know, I sucked it up, and he just got back to work, and I thank Saban for that. Peace, peace. What a great story, and it's great to see him have such an amazing year so far. Keep it going, Trayvon. We're pulling for you here at Alabama. Trayvon has a shot at a lot of records this season. Those were our Crimson Tide and the NFL Players of the Week. Some great performances this week from our Alabama alums. This week, the Crimson Tide stays on the road as Alabama travels just across the state line to take on the Mississippi State Bulldogs. We'll have a full preview of that matchup in Starkville coming up next. Tide TV This Week is presented by the University of Alabama, where legends are made. What you do every day matters. At Alabama, it's our process that yields legendary results. This is where ideas forge innovation, dreams unleash opportunities, and contenders become champions. How far do you want to go? The University of Alabama, where legends are made. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week. The Crimson Tide are on the road yet again this week as Alabama travels to Starkville to take on Mississippi State. For a preview of this weekend's matchup between the Tide and the Bulldogs, our Christopher England joins us now. This weekend, Alabama remains on the road as the Tide travels just 84 miles west to Starkville to take on the Mississippi State Bulldogs. To preview this weekend's matchup, I'm joined once again by former NFL and Crimson Tide quarterback John Parker Wilson. Good to see you, man. Hate it. it's after a loss. I think this is the first time we've done it after a loss, but uh, we'll move on, onward and upward. Alabama has won 13 in a row over Mississippi State. The Tide won 41 to nothing last season in Tuscaloosa and have won the last three over the Bulldogs by a combined 103 to seven. The Tide has been very dominant against the Bulldogs as of late. Yeah, they really have. Um, you know, Alabama's been playing good, and I think this is a different Mississippi State team. Uh, than the past few years. You know, lost two games so far this season uh, with a combined of five points. So Mike Leach has got these guys playing really well after he's been there for a couple of years now. And with Mississippi State beating Texas A&M and then us losing last week to A&M, you know, they've got to have a lot of confidence coming in this, especially after the bye week. Practice has been very intense this week. From your experience with Coach Saban in Alabama, do you feel like that carries over to the field on Saturday? Absolutely. I think you hear Coach Saban always talk about it. How you practice during the week is, is eventually how you're going to play on Saturday, and that's going to be reflected on the field. So it's nice to hear some big positive comments and challenging comments coming out of the players this week. And then on the field, it, it really is going to lead into Saturday. So I like the intensity, getting back to, you know, you'll get back to a lot of fundamentals, a lot of basics after loss, and just, you know, start trying to build up to where you were before. Well, the Alabama offense scored just 10 points in the final three quarters against Florida at the Swamp, and only 10 in the first two against Texas A&M at Kyle Field. In a neutral site game and three home games, the tide has averaged over 49 points per game. As Alabama gets ready for another road contest in front of a lot of rowdy cowbells in Starkville, has been on the road and playing in front of a couple of very loud environments really had that much of an effect on this offense? Well, I think anytime you play on the road, especially in, in, in loud environments like we have in the SEC, Florida, A&M, they're both fantastic environments. Um, 
you know, Mississippi State's going to be a lot like that. But I think now, after playing a few of those games, our, our team should be in rhythm. Uh, we saw the offensive penalties go way down against A&M compared to Florida and the other uh, previous games. So they're getting better at it. And I think now you kind of know what to expect. Back-to-back road games are always tough just because, you know, you go all the way to College Station. It's a long trip. And now you're going to get on a bus to drive to Mississippi State. So it's always a challenge. Well, despite those five quarters on the road, this Alabama offense has been very productive. Alabama is second in the SEC and sixth in the nation in scoring over 44 points per game. Over their last three games, the Tide has also rushed for an average of 191 yards. However, Mississippi State is second in the SEC and ninth in the country in rushing defense, allowing just 89 yards per game. How do you see the Alabama offense matching up against this Mississippi State defense? Really stingy on the run, not as good against the pass. I think Mississippi State's 69th in the country right now against the pass. So, so you would probably typically go into a game plan like this saying, hey, we're going to we're gonna try to throw the ball more. But at the same time, I think Brian Robinson, man, he's he's been playing so good. He's been running the ball hard. The offensive line's been blocking for him. And he's really emerged as a leader and, and one of the biggest playmakers we have on offense. So I think you have to continue to feed him and get him going. Um, but also, you know, what we saw last week, Jameson Williams, fantastic game, huge run after catch, big play. So I think him and Bryce have really got in a rhythm now. And you just you try to, try to keep both sides going, running and passing. On the flip side, the Mississippi State offense hasn't scored a lot. The Bulldogs are 11th in the SEC in scoring offense at 27 points per game. And they're also dead last in the SEC at rushing at 56 yards per game. But as you ex- as expect from a Mike Leach, air raid offense. They lead the SEC in passing by a huge margin. The Bulldogs are averaging 372 yards per game, 62 more yards per game than the second place Crimson Tide. Now, not many teams have played man-to-man against Mississippi State, so how do you see Alabama matching up? Well, I I think we we match up well. Our secondary has played really well. Um, You know, struggled a little bit at times last week against A&M. I think it's about getting pressure on the quarterback. 57 pass attempts, Will Rogers averaging uh, right now, a week. So we know they're going to throw it. That's that's their DNA. That's their bread and butter. We have to be ready for it. And I think what we're going to try to do on defense is just confuse them. Throw a lot of different looks at them. Um, but it, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to pressure. Can our guys get back to the quarterback? And then how many people do we have to send? Can we get back there with four defensive linemen rushing? Or do we need to send a couple with a linebacker or secondary blitz? Uh, wasn't able to get any sack last week against A&M. So definitely something this week we need to improve on. Well, it feels like this could be a turning point in the season for the Crimson Tide. What are your final thoughts on their performance to this point and how the game will play out on Saturday? Absolutely. You know, we always say you, you make the most improvements between week one and week two, but you also find out a lot about your team after loss. How do you respond to it? What is the leadership like in the locker room, on the practice field, you know, getting ready for meetings and studying? So I think this is going to tell us a lot about our team and what the rest of the season is going to look like. We want to come out and be efficient, execute against whoever we're playing. Mississippi State happens to be the next, the next one. Um, so we're, I think we're going to find out a lot, about, a lot about our team, a lot of talented guys, but how are we going to come together after a loss? Well, thank you once again, JP. Looking forward to the game on Saturday. Thank you, bud. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Kickoff in Starkville between Alabama and Mississippi State is set for 6 p.m. on ESPN. You can listen to John Parker Wilson, Eli Gold, and the rest of the Crimson Tide Sports Network crew online and on the radio beginning at 3 o'clock. Stay with us. We'll have more Tide TV this week coming up next. Tide TV This Week is presented by Ford. For great offers on F-150, see your local Ford dealer. Proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide. In a season of chaos, you can tell they authentically play for each other. Alabama does it. Absolute perfection. How good can the Crimson Tide be again in 21? It just doesn't show any sign of slowing down. It's all about the process. It's more than a buzz at Brian Denny. This guy's not going anywhere. He doesn't just roll out great players. He and his staff develop them. Bama's dominance shouldn't scare you. It should energize you. 
Welcome back to Tide TV This Week. I'm Kira Goldstein, joined by my co-host, Roger Hoover. After defeating 24th-ranked LSU 1-0 and dropping a 3-1 decision to 7th-ranked Arkansas, the Crimson Tide soccer team was back in action this past Sunday against Mississippi State. Playing at home in Tuscaloosa for the Power of the Pink match, the Crimson Tide looked to even their conference record with a win over the Bulldogs. It was a defensive battle early on as goalkeeper McKinley Crone had an outstanding day for the Crimson Tide with three incredible saves to make it 40 on the year for Crone. It was the fourth shutout of the year for McKinley Crone. It also remained a scoreless contest until the 72nd minute of the match off a corner kick. Riley Tanner drills it toward the net, actually hit off the arm of Raina Race to go to the back of the net for the game winner. Tanner's second goal of the season gave Alabama a 1-0 win over Mississippi State. Big win for the Crimson Tide as they improved to 8-7 overall and 3-3 three three in SEC play. Now let's hear from soccer stars Reina Reyes and Tana sanchez Corretto about playing for Alabama, playing for the Mexican national team, and their friendship. I chose to come to Alabama just because I really love the team here. I love the chemistry whenever I came on my visit, and the coaches were just very welcoming, the whole team, and I just knew that I could be happy here. When I first came here, it was just like the campus, the people, Obviously having Reina here helped a lot. I just like, I feel like I was in a movie, like the campus is so pretty, the, the feel, the players give me like a really good vibe. And also Wes, Wes was like, I don't know, I feel like he will help me a lot as a soccer player. When I got my first call up to the senior Mexican national team, I just like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh, like, wow. And I just knew like, whenever I went, like I had to give it my all. I had to, you know, be out like 110% more than, more than what other people were giving because I was going to be like the young one there and I had to prove myself. Playing with Reina in the U17 national team was just like, I don't know, I love having her on my team. She's just one of those teammates that you like on your team. You like. She's gonna give her 100% no matter what happens. At first, like, Tana came on the team and um, she was just like, she was just so shy at first. Like, she was a total different person than she is now. And once we got to know each other, like, we just like instantly clicked and she was just so sweet, so funny. And like, we experienced like two different cultures together. I go into her country and I don't speak her language very well. And you know, she's, she was the one that always helped me out too. And then like, she came, she comes over into my country and like, same for her, vice versa. But that did give us a unique bond. I try to speak Spanish to her here, just like, trying to learn from each other and she also like corrects me sometimes when I'm wrong. When I don't know a word I'll just start speaking Spanish and she will get it. So that's something that I don't get with anyone else. Being able to represent my country from our from the US is like, you know, I'm like Mexico outside. I don't know, I love that. Like I can like score a goal and they will say like a Mexican player score a goal in the US. So it's just, like putting Mexico in a very high or top level. What prepares me the most for my soccer career is like every time we go out in the field we're gonna have like a tough game that will like take me out of my comfort zone so I really like that I think that's why I came to the US to like explore different types of soccer and I've talked with Reina and a lot of teammates and I was like if I can be tough and physical like a US style and I can also play like having the ball in my feet and be more technical like Mexico then I'll be a very complete soccer player. The bond that Rain and me we have is more like just like a teammate, it's like like family kind of thing. That's the only thing that I can We picture the student athlete for the hit, the catch, the run. But it's time we picture them for more. The flag bearer, the flag changer. Poet, the big dreams, the huge heart, and the team comedian. More than students, more than athletes. Welcome back. Just like soccer, the Alabama volleyball team held their annual Power of Pink match this past Saturday as the Tide hosted the defending national champion, Kentucky Wildcats. The Wildcats entered the matchup 11-3 and, and ranked fifth in the nation, while the Tide was an even 8-8 eight and, eight and looking for their first SEC win. 
It was Kentucky taking the first two sets 25-19 and 25-15. It was in the third that the Tide made a late push. Down 22-17, Alabama scored four unanswered points to draw within one at 22-21. After a Wildcats kill and back-to-back -back errors, the score was tied at 23. A kill on the next rally gave Kentucky match point before a block ended it at 25-23 for the 3-0 win for Kentucky. Very hard-fought match for the Tide against the fifth-ranked Kentucky Wildcats. With both teams seeking their first conference win of the season, Alabama and Missouri battled to five sets Wednesday night in Columbia with the Crimson Tide coming away with the hard-fought 3-2 victory. The win snaps a nine-match winning streak in the series for the Tigers, with Alabama earning its first win against Mizzou since 2015 and its first road win since 2014. The win evens the Tide's record at 9-9 and and also gives the Crimson Tide their first SEC win of the season. Very impressive for them. The Alabama men's golf team was back in action in Birmingham this past week for SEC match play hosted by Jerry Pate. All 14 SEC teams competed in the tournament. The Crimson Tide captured a 3-2 win over the Ole Miss Rebels on Tuesday to finish the event with a 3-1 record thanks to a chip-in birdie on hole 18 by freshman Jones Free. In addition to the win over the Rebels, Alabama defeated Florida 3-2 in round two and South Carolina four to one in round three. The lone loss came in round one to LSU. The Crimson Tide was one of three teams to finish with three victories along with Georgia and Vanderbilt, while Arkansas was the only team to go 4-0. Crimson Tide will close out the fall season at the Jackson T. Stevens Cup in Little Rock, Arkansas on October 18th through the 20th. The Alabama softball team began their fall season this past weekend as the Tide traveled to Nashville to take on Lipscomb in a doubleheader. Alabama dropped the opener 3-2 but bounced back with a 7-0 shutout in Game 2. Lexi Kilfoyle put Alabama in front early in Game 2, crushing a two-run homer to straightaway center. K.J. Haney added another run with an RBI single in the fifth, driving in McKay Gidley all the way from first base before blasting a grand slam in the sixth to make it 7-0. Alex Salter faced the minimum over four innings in the start, while Montana Fouts went six up, six down, and two relief innings. Crimson Tide will host Louisiana Monroe, Memphis, and West Alabama at Rhodes Stadium this Saturday and Sunday. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll have our plays and players of the week. You can tell they authentically play for each other. Alabama does it. Absolute perfection. How good can the Crimson Tide be again in 21? It just doesn't show any sign of slowing down. It's all about the process. It's more than a buzz at Bryant Denny. This guy's not going anywhere. He doesn't just roll out great players. He and his staff develop them. Bama's dominance shouldn't scare you. It should energize you. Lead Williams out of the backfield, dives into the end zone, touchdown Alabama, as it's blocked by Alabama, it rolls into the end zone, covered by the Crimson Tide for a touchdown. Price looks far side behind the defense, caught, touchdown, Jamison Williams. Jamison Williams was alone near side, touchdown Alabama, touchdown Alabama. Service by Cat Rogers. Headed around, Alabama's Tanner, got it! And Alabama breaks through. Those were our ATI Plays of the Week. Now let's take a look at our Players of the Week brought to you by Legacy of Hope. Alabama freshman Jones Free had a huge clutch performance in the final day of SEC match play in Birmingham. Free chipped in for birdie on the 18th hole to secure a one-up victory and the clinching point in the Crimson Tide's 3-2 win over Ole Miss in Tuesday's final round of SEC match play, hosted by Jerry Pate. Senior Riley Tanner netted her second game-winning goal of the season in the Tide's win over Mississippi State. Tanner's goal in the 72nd minute gave the Crimson Tide the 1-0 win over the Bulldogs. Junior wideout Jamison Williams had a game-high 10 receptions for 146 yards and two touchdowns in the Tide's matchup with Texas A&M. Seven of Williams' 10 catches resulted in a first down. He also added a two-point conversion to go along with the two touchdowns. Senior running back Brian Robinson Jr. went over the century mark for the second consecutive game. Robinson finished with 147 yards rushing as he averaged 6.1 yards per carry. Robinson also added four receptions for 60 yards. Congratulations to our Legacy of Hope Players of the Week. We hope you'll tune in next week as we bring you more on the Crimson Tide and all-access content of the Tide you can't get anywhere else. We'll see you next week, everybody. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. 
This has been a presentation from Learfield.